Hi, this is uh, Kevin. Welcome back to uh, part three of the tutorial for the uh, Jupyter Notebook assignment. And um, if you've done your work in uh, finishing up from part uh, two, uh, you've added two more things uh, to the notebook, okay? Uh, where we left off when we were working uh, together is uh, we had did the, we had done this uh, subsection analyze city name values and we wrote the program and we installed all this and we ran it and then on your own you should have done this analyze state name values and put the code in here uh, and run the uh, program Okay, and so what we can see here is that uh, we've got the same kind of problems with state names. There are only uh, 10 of them, and they're, uh, um, uh, but they're statistically uh, uh, mangled like the, uh, the city names. And um, these look like the right values to me because uh, we did 1,000 records, okay, we, um, uh, with uh, 10 different states. So we'd expect to see around 100, okay, and we can see that uh, California, we've got 84, 85, 90, and Florida, we have 115, and Georgia, we've got 88, 91, 96. That's not bad. Okay, that's that's about what we would expect. Okay, so um, I think this is these are probably pretty good uh, data. Okay, and again, the lowercase, the all lowercase ones are all at the end because lowercase uh, values in Unicode come after the uppercase uh, values. Okay. And you can see that we've got, again, we've got some that are all caps. That uh, That's a mistake. We've got some that are, um, we've got some that have an extra space. And then we've got some that, uh, we've got some that uh, are all lowercase. Okay, so those, are, those look to be the same general problems. Okay, now, uh, it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it again. Okay, that's not a bad I idea. Okay, again, if you want to force that, you can do file, uh, save, and checkpoint. Okay, because so we probably want to do this from time to time. Um, we haven't had this problem in our notebook yet because we haven't gone back and changed any values, but uh, if you look at the sequence of the of the cells, we went from two to three to four. Okay, um, you can get into problems with um, uh, if you go back and change some things, they'll get into a different sequence. Uh, you don't always want that. It's often a problem when you're importing a program. Okay. Uh, that uh, you go back and change the program in uh, uh, PyCharm, okay, and you retest it there, and then you come back in here, and you can't get it to see the new version of the program, okay? Whenever you're getting either uh, cells that seem to be in the wrong sequence, or you don't think you're getting the right import, that's the time that you want to come up here and click on kernel, restart and run all. Okay, and they have to confirm that. Okay, and that will that will run the notebook from the bottom to the top, and that is what you want. You'll get new imports. You'll get everything run in order all the kind of things that can get out of sorts about a notebook uh, it can be solved by a restart and run all now for us that doesn't have a lot of cost right uh, we're running on our own uh, computer right 
uh, our own uh, computers for the most part are just lazing around all day. Okay. Um, the other thing is that we're not keeping a lot of data in the memory of the computer. Uh, okay. Because we're not working with one of these kind of memory intensive um, data analysis uh, packages like uh, pandas when we run things we're not like r wiping out the in memory copy of our work we're not really saving much in memory copies of our work uh, here so one thing that that i want to warn you about is this uh uh restart and run all i mean that will that'll run everything again and if you if you're doing some kind of a data analysis uh, project and you've uh, processed three billion records right and and that it's all up in some kind of a memory structure in your notebook well you're going to pay to do that all again okay and that's okay but if you're on uh, uh, some kind of service in the cloud uh, that might actually cost some dollars. I don't know how many, okay? So a general way to straighten out your work is to run it from the beginning to the end uh, with this re restart and run all. And certainly before you give your project up, you do want to rerun it to um, before you give it up, before you turn it in, right? Before you're done with it. You do want to show that it's reproducible, okay? but um in uh some kind of uh cloud situations where you're paying for your usage of time uh each one of these restart and runoffs uh could cost you a couple of bucks so keep that in mind okay so here we are how far have we gotten we have the raw data we configured it we ran analyze city name values we ran analyze state name values. They seem to have the same uh, kind of problems. That's because uh, I, I, I'm the guy who mangled them and I mangled them with the same code. Okay. And now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get to part three. Let's look at the instructions for part three. Um, part three correct data coding errors uh, within that we're going to do the configure the run correction uh, program we're going to have to write the correction uh, program to do it and then we're going to show the cleaned uh, data including we're going to we're going to show analyze city name values analyze state name values okay all right so let me kind of show you what that looks like in my already baked version. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. In my already in my already baked version, I've got a section here in the middle. Uh, correct data coding errors. I have a configure a section where I. It configure the cleaned uh, data file name. Uh, I run a correction uh, program. You know, we're going to have to build that. Uh, you can see that it gives us some um, polite messages and statistics. Okay. And then um, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to analyze the cleaned uh, data to show that they're clean. Right. So we're going to use that uh, analyze it, 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 city name values to show that uh, the city names are behaving now. Uh, uh, there should be only 20 of them, and they've all got about 50. Um, they've all got about 50 instances. Again, I generated them in a statistical way, so they're not going to all be exactly 50. Okay, and then we have analyzed state name values, and um, they're going to be uh, 10 of these, and they're all going to be around 100, and that's right. Now, is it all going to work out this neatly? 
Uh, no, it's going to be a bit of a, it's going to be a bit of, of a mystery. Uh, it's going to be like reading a, a mystery uh, novel, okay? You're going to find out what's wrong with them, and then you're going to try to clean them, and then you're going to look and see if they're cleaned, and maybe they won't be all cleaned, and you're going to go back, and you're going to fix the program, and you're going to run. Okay, so there's this process. It's going to be pretty neat here because... I engineered the errors and I'm telling you how to fix them. But um, a real data cleaning project is more of an investigation. Okay, but uh, would, the would the notebook be organized like this? Yes, I, th I think it would. A well-organized uh, data cleaning notebook would look like this, more or less. Okay, so let's see what we're going to bring over next okay uh so we need to correct the data coding errors so let's um let's give a level two uh title for that okay so we're going to turn it into a markdown cell all right and i'm just going to uh copy paste here from my already baked version. Correct data coding errors. Okay, and I need to say that it is a uh, level two uh, title. Okay, and then right after it, I have a, 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 a subtitle configure. So let's put three of these in a space and say configure. And we're going to do a shift enter uh, to turn them into a pretty uh, type. Okay, and now we're going to have a code cell for configuration. Okay, this code cell is going to say that the cleaned data file name equals cleaned uh, data dot text. Now, uh, when we move on and we look at things, uh, I'm going to do a demo, at least in the current semester, I'm going to do a demo of uh, Pandas next week. You're going to see that, uh, oh, and, and I'm going to be using uh, courseware from LinkedIn Learning. You're going to see that there are some uh, practitioners that use these really miser miserly little... Um, uh, variable names. Oh, okay. Why do they do it? Well, for the courseware people, they want to get everything onto one line and make it easy to read. But um, uh, I don't uh, glean from that that we think that anything other than descriptive variable names are good. Just because we've come over to a notebook, Okay, it doesn't really mean that good practices in Python have been suspended. Okay, what well, was a good variable name uh, when we were coding a program in uh, PyCharm is going to be a good variable name over here. Although, if you look at a lot of examples in uh, tutorials or in textbooks, you'll see uh, you'll see somebody call this uh, something like a CDF. Okay, don't be tempted. Use real variable names. Okay, okay. So we've got that. Now uh, we're gonna have to run the correction program. So let's um, let's execute this. We'll get another cell. Okay, and we want to make markdown. Okay, and we want to say we want a level three title. Uh, run correction program okay and execute that okay that's good and let's just put the code in that we're going to execute after we have that all uh we actually have the program let's look at what that would look like Okay, we don't want to execute that yet because we don't actually have the program. But here's the input from correct data coding errors, input do correct data coding errors. And then 
we call do correct data coding errors and what are we passing it well the sub directory that we had up higher in the uh, the notebook plus raw file uh, data name that was up higher and then clean a data file name well that's something that we configured right uh, there okay so that's what we're going to do so let's go create that program okay the correction uh, program okay let's go to PyCharm okay and we need another program so we're going to highlight the the name of the project right click new Python file and what do we call it correct data coding errors correct data coding errors okay enter all right that's good so I'm going to copy over the code and uh, talk about it as we go okay so this is going to be like all of these uh, programs that we run for there so we're going to start out we're going to use the convention that we've been using in the course uh, so far just putting a normal comment in the beginning to have the name of the file and then uh, uh, a, a comment that uh, describes the intention of the program so reads raw data file and writes clean data file with a data coding errors corrected well that's pretty general okay and again we're going to have our main okay this really has our test code this this is the test code for when we run it in uh, PyCharm okay we, we we want to be able to run it both ways right okay and let's look at this um pretty similar to the last one we did uh we have a variable that holds the name of the subdirectory uh data uh a variable that holds the input file name raw data dot text uh one for the output file name cleaned uh, data dot text and so we're going to call this the same way here that we would call it uh, from the notebook do correct data coding errors we're going to pass the subdirectory input file name output file name okay and let's look uh, at the beginning of do correct data coding errors okay and again we're kind of following that pattern that I showed you a couple of uh, tutorials ago okay so what do we have here do correct data coding areas uh, what what does it get for parameters directory in file name out file name now I purposely use different variable name parameter names here to emphasize the fact that we can't see the variables from main okay and what did I do well I constructed the the combination of the path a name and the file name for in file and for out file and I opened uh, in file for reading out file for writing encoding on both of them UTF-8 and I thought it would be nice it's usually helpful when you write these kind of uh, processing uh, programs to have a couple of uh, polite messages that come out okay uh, number one if you don't put it put if you don't print anything out um, it's kind of hard to see that the things actually run okay so you want to you want to do something and typical things that you might do is uh, show the files that you processed what was the input what was the output and then how many records you uh, processed so uh, we're we're initializing the variable in which we're going to do the counting for the records uh, processed okay all right and let's look at uh let's look at the code okay and uh 
I'm going to bring this over in two parts because I'm not going to give you the code for the part I want you to do on your own. Okay. Uh, okay, so this this code as we have it here is going to fix the Sydney name but not the state name and I'm going to have you go back and fix the state name yourself. Okay. All right. So what's going on here? Okay. Um, so, uh, we're reading the input file again. Okay. Okay. The input file is the, um, the raw data, uh, dot text. Okay. So for line and in file, uh, what's the first thing I'm doing? I'm doing a line strip. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to do, um, uh, is I'm trying to get the line feed off the end of the line. Okay. And then uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, split it on the comma. There's the comma. And then I want, that's going to create a list and we unpack it into city name, state name, value. Okay. Um, and what do I do? Well, I do a fix up on city name. Okay. And here's a new syntax you haven't seen uh, before. Okay. I'm calling two different methods of the string uh, class. So a city name is an instance of string and it has a strip that gets rid of extra spaces in the beginning and the end. That's a common uh, coding error. Okay. Okay. And the other thing is we're calling a title. And what does a title do? It gives you a cap as the initial letter in each of the words. Okay. So if we had a two word city name like uh, San Jose or uh, New York, okay, it would capitalize the N in new and the y in york okay and that's title case okay so what does it mean to call one method and then have another dot and then have another one well uh it's called method uh chaining okay and you can't do this with all uh, methods in order for method uh, chaining to work like this um it has to be, uh, oh, the people who write the method have to use a certain uh, protocol that's part of the Python infrastructure. And it turns out that that's worth uh, doing for, for some uh, methods and not worth uh, doing for others. It turns out that um, it's something that they implemented for all of the methods of string. So if you want to pipe one into the next, okay, so here's what we're saying. Take the city name, strip off the leading and trailing spaces, and then pump the output of that into, into the method, a title, which turns, um, which turns the initial uh, character in each of the words into uppercase, okay? And then, uh, of course, does it really change them? No, it doesn't change them. It gives us a new value. Now, could I have done this in two steps? I could have. Well, why did I why did I decide to show you this here? Well, it turns out that uh, again in the current semester, I'm going to be doing a demo of of the pandas library uh, next week, and uh, in pandas, in a lot of those those kinds of uh, packages, um, they have, uh, they do like filtering and sorting and that kind of stuff of the data. And they've written a lot of the methods so that they, you can chain them uh, together. So we're going to be seeing method uh, chaining in pandas next week. So I figured I would show you method uh, chaining uh, uh, here uh, with 
strings. All right, that's what we're doing here. So we're stripping the extra spaces and we're we're setting it to title case. Okay, that should get rid of all the problems that we have with city names. And then we're using an F string to format um, the output uh, file, which is the city name a comma, the state name a comma, and the value. Now the value stayed a string the whole time. Okay. And then, then we say file equals out file to make sure that we're sending it to out file. And we're incrementing the records process such that we have a good records process count when we're done. Okay. When we've gone around and we've done all, all of these, uh, we've we've uh, processed the file, then we want to close the in file, close the out file. And now we want to print some polite messages so you can tell the thing actually ran. So let's do that. Let's come down here and print a couple of polite messages. So uh, the input uh, file the input, the in file full naming includes the the path on the front, the output file the same thing, and then how many records were processed. And again, we did those all with f strings. Okay, and now we just have to call main. Okay, and do we always want to call main? No, we only want to call main if we're running a test in uh, PyCharm here. Okay, so let's do the have your cake and eat it two version, okay, where we say if it, it dunder name equal equal dunder main run main. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to run this. Okay. Uh, mine's going to run right the first time because I copied it from my already baked version. Uh, yours uh, probably won't. You know, you've typed it in. Uh, when I type in uh, programs, I never get them uh, completely right the first time. And it could easily happen to you. Okay. But what what we want to do is we want to run it here in PyCharm until uh, we get the right answers. Okay. So let's, uh, let's right click and say run the program. And it says a thousand records were processed. That looks right. Uh, how do we know if it ran right? Well, let's just open this cleaned uh, data.txt. Double click on this. And uh, we're going to look. Okay. Now, did we, did we repair the, the, um, did we repair the state uh, names? No, we haven't repaired them yet. You're going to go back and you're going to do that on your own in a, a couple of minutes. Okay. But look down the city names and they all seem to be in pretty good form. Okay. I think we're ready. That's enough testing for me. I'll probably go all the way down the bottom. Do I have anything uh, down the bottom that are cities in all lowercase? No, I don't. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now I'm ready to run it in my um, notebook. So I come over here, and before we left the notebook, we, we had put the code in uh, to, uh, uh, to run. I haven't executed yet, so now I'm going to do a shift enter. Uh, and it says uh, input file. Uh, it's got the input file, output file, a thousand records were processed. So, yeah, that seems to have run just fine. Okay. Now, what else do I want to do? Well, let's uh, take a look at this. Uh, we want to analyze. Um, the city names to see if they've been fixed. So how, let's look at my already, already big version. So I've got a major heading cleaned uh, data, and now I'm going to do analyze 
CD name values, but I'm going to do it on the clean file. Okay. All right. So let's bring those over. Okay. Um, we've got it. So let's do uh, markdown. Okay. Um, level two heading. Clean val clean data. Okay, and right after that, a level three heading. Uh, analyze city name values. Okay, and you'll notice that if I don't put a space before the text. I don't put a space after the pound signs. It doesn't quite see it as a title. And then shift enter to get those two. OK. And then, I'll, and then I just have to call. Do you analyze city name values? Do I need to import it? No, it's already imported. This is really all one very simple Python uh, program. So the things that we've done in the top of it uh, they're still in the memory now. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, my imports are done. Uh, my configuration of the variables is done. So I'm just going to call again. Do you analyze city name values, subdirectory, clean uh, data file name? And let's uh, shift enter. And here we are. Those look much better, OK? Now, I know from the way I generated these, we should have about 50-ish each. And it looks like we do. We've got one as low as 41. We have one as high as 59. Again, I did these statistically so they wouldn't look too phony, OK? They're all a mixed case. If we counted them, there'd be 20 of them. There don't seem to be in any extra spaces. I think they have just what we want. Okay, good. Are we done yet? Well, we're not, right? Because our data correction program only fixes city names, not state names. Okay, and we're not displaying the state names. OK, so uh, what's left for you to do? OK, having worked together to correct the city names and demonstrate the corrections, you will continue on to do the same activities for state names. When complete, your notebook should match the notebook version I show at the very end of the part three tutorial. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go uh, and do the work for state names. So you're going to have to change the, the correction uh, program to also uh, correct state names. And then you're going to have to, you're going to, have to add uh, the code that uh, runs analyze state names again with clean uh, data file name. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is, um, well, I'm just going to show you what it should look like when you're done. Okay. I don't have to pause for that because I have it in my already baked version. So when you're done, okay, you're do analyze state name values called with the clean data file name should give you these 10 states. Again, they should be mixed uh, case, no extra spaces, and they should all be around 100. In fact, uh, since you're analyzing the same file that I am, they should be 95, 119, etc. This is what you should be getting. Okay. Are you done yet when you've done that? Now, well, uh, two more things. One, click on uh, kernel, restart and run all. OK, and we did that. OK, so now you can see 
uh, you should be able to look at the cell numbers and see that they're in order from one through the end. Uh, we've only got seven real uh, code cells. And then you want to click on File, uh, Save and Checkpoint, Overwrite. And then you are done, done. Then you just have to go on and uh, follow the instructions for it's zipping this up and handing it in, which is pretty much the same as uh, all the projects that we've done in prior assignments. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed uh, doing it with you. And uh, I look forward to talking about this in class when we review the solutions. I'm going to say bye until then. Bye bye.